start it now hello we are in chicago and i have brian visiting with me and we are from humancolony.org now it's december 6th 2015 and uh, brian welcome you i welcome you to the interview uh, let me uh, brian is one of us one of the human colony uh, folks who are with us for a long, for a long time and who are present in our webinars and drive our webinars and facilitate our webinars. So Brian, um, today I want to ask you about your your path. How did you get to the point where you are now? Uh, maybe you can start from something most interesting, something the brightest point. Yeah, in about 2008, um, I think about 2008, um, I had my experience um, I saw some lights in the sky. I didn't know what it was. Um, I was on my way to work. I saw these orange orbs of light uh, at the end of the cold. Uh, well, I was ready to turn left or right at a fork. Um, I wasn't sure what it was. I looked up. There was a, I came to a stop sign, looked above the trees, and maybe about four, three, four hundred feet from the trees, I saw a orange orbs of light. Uh, they would blink in and out. Uh, it's almost like you're blinking. And it would bl like winking, actually. It would wink in, wink out. I didn't know what it was. Um, I was really fascinated by it. I knew I had to get to work. So I looked up in the sky, and they were just playing with me. And I knew it, it was like, it, I felt like they knew I was there. Um, stopped at the stop sign, but I had to turn left and head into about a couple miles into work. Um, I still had a couple miles left to drive. And what happened was I decided, um, I looked at it, I thanked them for showing themselves, whatever it was, uh, and I started going toward work. So I made a left, going toward work, and the lights blinked out. And it was neat because right before I turned, the lights did like a, not a full triangle, but one was up in the air and probably diagonal from it. Uh, I don't know how many feet it would be. It, it popped in, so it was a bright one one above and then diagonal from it another one just popped in and then the one above blinked out and then the one on the bottom blinked out and then i said thank you and gratitude and i decided well i got you know i only have 10 minutes i gotta get to work so i turned off i thanked them they're gone i was driving on my way to work and all of a sudden uh on my way to work i'm thinking to myself you know i'd like to see that one more time before i get to work and mentally i said please show yourselves again as soon as I said that, I looked up, you know, toward my rear view mirror, and right in front of me, another orb just blinked in. It just showed itself, this orange, brilliant orange orb of pulsating light. It was pulsating. It was just beautiful. So it was like a golden type yellowish, not reddish, just mostly a, an orangish type, golden type pulsating orb of light. And it just, it hovered there, and then as I drove, it was, it was almost like it was starting to go over, and then I had to turn, and I went to work, and I just said thank you and gratitude, and that was really, that was in April, April 16th, 2008, and what's really fascinating about that date is, on UFO Hunters, a television show, um, later, that, that, well, Within the matter of that week's UFO UFO hunters was on, and what was neat is they showed an episode of those exact orange orbs of light. Uh, it was out of Kokomo, Indiana, and that's about an hour from me. So going, uh, see here west, going east from Lafayette, Indiana, about 45 minutes to an hour, you come into Kokomo, Indiana, and that's where they did a documentary from the UFO hunters came out. Uh, the people that run that and they did a documentary on it and they interviewed people that saw those exact same lights the night that I saw them too it just went on those lights moved on to Kokomo and it's recorded in um, on file and through UFO hunters so it was really fascinating but that was one of the first um, later on during that year of 2008 I went on to see it four different other occasions so total five times I saw those orange orbs of love of light it was beautiful yeah okay. thank you uh, so the a little more closer wonderful all right now uh, 
for you it's obvious, but you know why it couldn't be a helicopter or an airplane? Right. Uh, good question. The, the funny thing is when I the see here the second or third time was during the summer when I saw it again. It came toward my house. It was closer in the vicinity of my cul-de-sac in the neighborhood, or one neighborhood over, and I saw a plane go by behind it, and then it flashed in between me and where I was at my house at the time, between me and the far, far, like at least a couple miles away. There was a we we live close to an airport, but that airport. Um, was on the west West Lafayette, and as the plane is going by behind it, it between me and the plane, it blinked in and it stayed on, and it was closer. It had to have been less than, I'd say, less than two thousand feet at least, you know, half a mile or so. So it was well within here, just another neighborhood over, farther back, so at least a couple thousand feet, and. It, it opened up it something went around and I could see something I was looking through my blinds and because I was playing a video game at the time and the blinds were closed but this flash of orange light uh, was in my room and it flashed around the, the blinds and it had to be pretty strong for that you know to see outside you know cars go by but you don't really see the, the lights uh, come through the blinds you know and what was really fascinating about that was that um, I, I got this impulse to look out the window. I got this this strong urge, like in my in my gut, in my in, in the in the. I just felt like just look out because I saw that flash, and I and I peered through the blinds. We have thick blinds too, and when I peered through the blinds and looked, all of a sudden I could see this this light. This thing opened up. It looked like it was already open. It's pulsating light. There was a plane on the other side, way in the distance, and this light. Sh it shined like a, kind of like a spotlight, but it was a, it was like it was scanning the house. It it just like came down, and you could see something open up inside, and it was like turning like it's almost like a lighthouse. How you have those lights that go around the lighthouse, and as it was turning, I could see the light. This it it beamed like it got real bright. And I saw the edges when I was peering out the blinds. You could see the, the look at, you know, out the window. I could see it light up the house. Just scanned right on the house. Nowhere else around the neighborhood. It was right on our house. And it, it like, scanned it. And then it just went out. And what I, now? Do you mean just turned off the light or disappeared uh, no, from... Just the, the, just the light part, that, that real brightness, orange. It got real bright. And, I, I, and, I, and then all of a sudden it just went out and I jumped back because I didn't know what it was. I mean, I kind of had a feeling what it was, but I was like, wow. Because usually your regular helicopter spotlights are white. You know, they shine that white beam and look around, but not an orange beam like that. And that was what was fascinating. I said, that's not a helicopter. It was just staying there. There was no, you know, you don't hear, you know, planes going by, but you hear when it's that low. I mean, it was maybe 500 feet up, but way in the distance. But when it shines uh, a light like that, usually if it was a helicopter, you would hear the rotation because yeah. the um, in between the houses it would vibrate. You know, toot, 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 toot. you would he you would hear the helicopter. It wasn't. You know, I could tell it wasn't a helicopter. But what was fascinating about that was it was just it was close but not too far away, and the plane was going by in the distance, and so it gave me some kind of vantage point. You know, it was very interesting to me, and. Um, I was I freaked out. I was afraid. I jumped back and like, oh my gosh! I mean, this I'm making some they're scanning me or something. I thought that they were scanning me just to see what I'm about because that was the second time. First was in no, I take that back. Once was in um, March when I was going on my way to work. And I saw something way on a ridge, and then the second time was April with the blink those lights that were. Um, blink it in blink it out and then the third time it was the third time during june or july of 2008 so later on that summer is when i saw it came and scanned the room or scanned the house and then uh it left and after that it was sad because i wanted to tell people about it i i wanted to uh my 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 family um i wanted them to understand what i was going through so what i want to try to share it with my mother and you know people closer around me they they didn't really want anything to do with it you know um it scared um it scared my time my my wife sarah at the time 
um, it scared her, and so it was hard. It was just heavy for me to hold, yeah, yeah. hold it like that. So it was really, it was, it was hard for me um, to share that with people I loved around me. And it is. I mean, we think that we can just share it with anybody, but sometimes it can break families apart. It can uh, friendships apart because they're not understanding it or they choose not to. Or it's just, it's nothing, they don't think much about it. So it's, but stay strong. And that's what I recommend for people who see these things. No, you're not going crazy. You're very grounded. It's just what happens is when you try to share something, your experiences, sometimes you have to come from a place of love, gratitude, and you're just sharing. But it, it just seems like you can't share it with everybody right away. You have to start small and only share it in the beginning with people you really trust and really have an openness to this and you know I thought you know at, my, at the time my wife Sarah would be a little bit more open to this but they just it scared once her friends and other people found out what I like and enjoy and wanted to know more about extraterrestrial life they didn't want anything to do with me so it really pushed a lot of people out of my life friends and other family members that otherwise if I didn't say anything, everything would be okay. But there's still there's a pain sometimes inside when people can't understand that we're just trying to share our message and we're just things that we see we just want to share with people. That's all. So. All right. So let's start earlier. Uh, what were your early developments? When did you open? How 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 you opening up happened? Um, I, ever since I was younger, I've always been a very curious kid. I always questioned everything. I questioned religion. I questioned everything. And it just, some, a lot of the things just didn't make sense to me. And I really found it that, um, for some reason, why things didn't make sense. But I question, always questioned everything. And I, I just couldn't find the answers to what I was looking for. So it led me, you know, I talked to religious leaders. I talked to um, to uh, you know people who were called psychics, mediums, and I started getting a little bit more answers because it was more universal. It wasn't just put in a box just for one planet. It was more of an expansion of what's really out there, life out there in the universe. It wasn't about just this planet. And um, what's beautiful now is when people. So back then, going back to your question, um, my awakening was really early because I questioned everything, um, and I had a near-death experience when I was younger. Hold on, I will double-check the microphone, and I'll stop on. Uh, I will focus on near-death experience just now. One, two, three. Yes, working. Yes. So near-death experience. So when I was about yeah, when I was about let's see here, I was about three, three and a half and there was a wind i was up on a ridge and the wind just pushed me over the hill and i rolled down the hill and into the side over into the ravine into the water into, into a lake actually and um i went under and i couldn't i i was trying to doggy paddle trying to keep my head above the water and within a matter of minutes on my last breath i looked up and i saw my uncle overlooking the balcony looking right down at me and he went like I was hoping he would hear me or someone would hear me up above and my uncle you know it took him a couple minutes to come down a good two minutes to get down there and um, I was on my last breath and I was uh, the last thing I saw him remember was seeing him and I went under and I didn't come back up uh, at the time um, I felt like when I went under I was like I, I just let go I totally let go and what happened was everything the, the the water was murky it was just really you couldn't see anything within a matter of a couple inches in front of you it was just all you know pure uh filled with algae and stuff but you just couldn't see anything it was just so muddy and dirty and all of a sudden when i let go of my last breath everything opened up the water you could see the water and it was so clear i could see just everything in the in the in the lake all around and it was just that crystal clear it just opened up all the dirt all the muck was gone and i could just see the water for what it was and all the plant life or whatever that was growing on the sides and stuff the the, the what you call the cattails growing out and everything. it was just beautiful and and i found it fascinating and all of a sudden i felt like it just closed and my uncle apparently pulled me out of the water and he was pushing my stomach and just tons and tons of water was coming out my 
my nose, my mouth, I was coughing, coughing heavily. And that's that. That's It was just fascinating for a glimpse. You know, it's almost like I crossed over just for a minute or so. <laughs> and here I am. So, how, how old were you? I was about three and a half. About three and a half. And how did you fall down? What was it? I was up on the hill, and how I fell down was it wasn't windy that day. That was what was weird. I was on top of a hill just looking over the water, and it felt like some wind, a gush of really strong wind, just pushed me over the edge and I just real I rolled down the hill I remember something just like a something just pushed me and I just rolled down and I was I was kind of far back but it was a gust of wind I was probably a good five feet from going over the hill is probably about a 60 degree angle and I just I was like catapulted and pushed and I just rolled all the way down and I couldn't stop myself from rolling because it was pretty steep and I just went to the water all right, and from that point on, what happened? After that, that's the earliest that happened. After that, you know, um, you mean like going on? La yeah, your major points of awakening. Um, that was something I think was just that triggering effect. Um, even when I was younger, on the top of the Christmas trees and stuff, the lights, you know, where they put the angels on Christmas trees or a star or something. Um, I remember when I was about two and a half, three before that incident happened um I, I must have been about two or th must have been two i think two or three i think i can think back that far back um there was um a light i looked where the star was because my mother was wrapping up um kind of wrapping up the uh, lights on the christmas tree just putting them up there for display and i saw um at the top where the star and the angel is this 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 like this or this golden glow this golden glow opened up and i could see like a face it looked like an angelic face very very beautiful and i was like this is this is amazing i said well, like wow and, she, and this like this being smiled at me it looked feminine in nature but it was a like just a face appeared and it would just show itself in this this like this beautiful silhouette and orc field around it and it was just it opened up and it looked down at me and it smiled at me and then it just and I think it was like maybe like a guardian angel or something. And then it just flashed out, disappeared. And then it was back to that star again. And it was just fascinating. So these little things through life um, I've always had. I just don't really, I've never really shared them with anybody else until now. So Next step. Yeah, just let's do step by step. Uh, moving up in my life, let's see here, elementary school. I remember uh, being, uh, I woke up one night. Uh, actually, I was in bed. I was asleep. I was put on a table. Um, uh, Wait a second. By whom put on the table? Uh, extraterrestrials. Oh. Yes, yes. So it was a typical abduction. I believe so. Yeah, I didn't feel like I didn't feel like they did any harm to my body. I think they were just working on me. Um, I, I I woke up. I was on a table. Um, I saw a big, beautiful, round f type of like a heart-shaped face, a uh, very tall being in a white robe. Uh, kind of look like the law the tall Zeta Grays type slash Lyran or something. I'm not sure or Syrian. It could have been Syrian. Uh, now that I look at some of the pictures, double check my uh, microphone. All right, one, two, three, working fine. Uh, no, Zeta Grays are small. It would be a tall gray. Okay, a tall gray. Actually, uh, heart shaped grays are um, fa face grays are a little different. So, okay. heart shaped tall gray. All right. And, and it was just a beautiful white robe and I, I was looking at it and it just sent love and there's these other little beans around it and they kind of look like um, like you said the typical like your grays and they're all around and it was they were very kind they, they didn't I didn't feel like any pain any probing or anything the only probing I think that they were doing was when I was laying down they were working down here on the lower section of my anatomy and they had like this field like I seen this glowing field around me and they could go inside without me feeling any type of pain so that was what was interesting I was watching them come in and out and doing stuff and I was like, wow, this is really fascinating. I, mean, I don't feel any pain. And uh, the being to the right of me, at the foot of me, when I was laying flat out, uh, on the right hand of my foot, was above, very tall, and said, we mean you no harm. We're here to work with you. Um, um, all I can remember was, uh, all I can remember is she said, or this being, it just felt feminine, saying, um, we've been watching you. We're, we're, 
um, we're here to help you later in your life, something along the lines of this. But the one thing I, I, I said, and I felt like I wouldn't be able to remember it, and I kept saying to them, please let me remember this. It was like I was still con. I was only between the ages of six and eight at the time. And I said, please let me remember this. I want to remember this. I don't want to forget this. And um, they said, well, we, you won't be able to remember it now. It won't serve you now or something like in the far flung future, you'll remember something. You'll remember this. And so when, after that was, that was done, I woke up that night and something I woke out of my sleep and something urged me something urged me to go and look out the window I was like I said I was only between the ages of six and eight to go look out the window and when I went uh, out the window or when I went to look out the window this white light was probably about I'd say a couple hundred feet away a couple hundred feet away and it, it it was amazing it was a couple hundred feet away and all of a sudden it shot straight up and it wasn't a plane. It was just this white light, this orb of light through the trees. And it shot straight up. And I felt like those are the beings. I'm just waking up out of this. And they put me back in the bed or, con you know, you know, I, I, my astral, I just came back. I'll try this again. So the dog knocked out the microphone. I think it was sent to block the transmission. Anyway, so you were talking about... Yeah, so I woke up. I woke up from that, laying on the table. After I laid on the table, woke up from that. And what was really interesting about this is when I woke up, I saw the beam of white light. I went back up. Uh -huh. Went back up. It went shot straight up in the air. And I woke up, but I opened up the... the my Star Wars curtains, I had Star Wars curtains at the time, I opened them up to look out and I saw that shoot back up and then I said to myself, thank you, like, thank you, and then I just went back to bed and I was about between the ages of six and seven. Was it thank you for the same same event or it was a different abduction event? Um, no, the, I felt this was the same, it was that night because it was just, I remember it just happening and then they, they, I like, I woke up and I felt like encouraged to go toward the window. And when I went toward the window, it was just hovering there, this white orb of light pulsating. And it was hundreds of feet away. And all of a sudden, it just shot up through the trees and went up. So that was right after the, you, you saw the heart shaped faced, um, uh, tall, tall bean. Okay. And all right. Next step, I guess. Uh, moving on to that, um, let's see here, my, my years. 13, 14, 15. After that, through junior high and high school, I really didn't have that I can think of. I just, I kind of like left it all behind. That was mostly in my elementary school years. But what happened is later down the road, I decided, um, I just, I just forgot about it. Like they said, you won't, you won't remember. And so I moved on. And um, after that, um, I didn't until I get my mid twenties into almost my thirties is when I really started remembering. I I would listen to a show with George Norrie and Art Bell called Coast to Coast Radio, and um, Internet Radio, and that's that's where I started. The remembrance came back, the triggering because they started talking about extraterrestrials, uh, ETs, just every everything that you can think of, ghosts. That's what really got me interested. That's where the the trigger. It just opened up. I said, ah, oh, I remember something when I was younger, you know, and it brought me back to those experiences when I was younger. And so this was this was really nice to be, you know, to be remembered. Uh, and then I wanted to get into channeling. I wanted to f I mean, I didn't know what channeling was, but in about 2004, 2005, 2006, uh, I met this group called the Wonders. I didn't know who they were and what it was about. Um, I was starting to get more interested in uh, psychics and mediums. And it started opening up about the channeling. And the channeling, when I heard about the wonders, uh, it just opened everything up. It brought me back. Uh, the remembrance came back. And I started, you know, paying for sessions, not with the wonders, but with like other psychics and just uh, anything I can get my hands on to really help me know more about myself. And I wanted to bring out some of these memories that I had that were locked away or buried that I'd forgotten for so many years. I wanted to know why now. Why was my interest in this now? Why was I this 
destination? Where did it come from? Um, and that's why I started researching all this. And now I come to a point where this is um, the remembrance for me. This is like it happened before, but I want to know more about it. And so... The tell, tell me a little more about Wanderers. The Wanderers, um, um, in 2006, uh, they had this internet radio show. And I came across them through a psychic, clicked on you know a blog or a blog link, and it said The Wonders, and they had their own website. And The Wonders um, is a group, of, in, in, like a collective of collectives. And, um, they would just throw it out there for, so for our mind to grasp, think of God, God is all that is, being in the 32nd dimension. Uh, the Wonders are on the 28th, 29th dimension, and we're on the 3rd dimension. So they're like a collective 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 it's just so expansive uh they said the numbers really doesn't matter what it is because it's just it's just an expansion is what it is um they said the more you grow the more we grow so it's like each individual being is a particle of god goddess all that is the the energy of love itself and as we are through our experiences through our choices they are expanding so it's just tapping into that greater consciousness that we're all a part of and you mentioned it was the Wanderers W O N D E R A S S dot com, right? Yeah, it's the www dot the t h e all one word t h e Wonders W O N D E R S dot com, and you'll find the website. Um, yeah, and that. all right. So ne next steps you wanted to speak about the next steps. What's that? Next steps in your. Um, opening up um and then that that's just so i wanted to know more and then i eventually in a couple years later i found bashar um and bashar's you know his energy is really great he's got some great stuff to say but i always i kept going back to the wonders something kept pa uh, coming back to them the wonders the one thing is they always went back to the self they're always for self-empowerment they're always for it was something about them that just clicked with me they're, they are my teachers in a way they're the ones that my inspiration um and and i love bashar and i love some of these other channels but i think the wonders for me is what really helped open me up more so um the wonders always about the the self-empowerment the self-love the self-gratitude um really it's that that the why shame why guilt they question everything so it's like question everything know thyself um and but they never really talk too much about extraterrestrials they're more about that self-empowerment of the self mm -hmm. so which is really fascinating and um yeah that's that's and then i was introduced to goddess sophia Yes. And the goddess, um, think of God, goddess, all that is. God, Sophia would be wisdom incarnated. So it's the counterpart to God itself. Um, and Sophia is that energy of what we call maybe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Fire. It's this, this energy that's expansive, like the wonders. And it's like, it's like talking, to, almost like talking to God. So it's not like anything greater than. That's the one thing about a lot of people as in humanity we think that that we have to really humble ourselves before god or something we have to worship and stuff but what sophia says there's no worship necessary don't worship us because you're as equal as us it's about that self-empowerment so it's not about anything greater than yourself you're the one that takes command you're the one having the experience you're the one that's here on the planet it's about you finding yourself being yourself at all times and it comes down to the choice you know do you choose out of joy or do you choose out of fear and so this is one of the sophia's greatest message and they used and she used to be online but now the the woman that channels used to channel goddess sophia she's moved on to do something different so yeah you won't find her videos online anymore <laughs> anything like that i had to save a lot of that stuff and sometimes i upload that to uh to hukalo wonderful all right what else do you want to speak about other think so fascinating Jeffrey Hoppy is the uh, the chan uh, the, uh, the the man who channels Adamas st. Germain and through Crimson Circle such beautiful elegance the way his grace how he carries himself on stage I really admire this man um, 
it just helps me to go back to self again. Adama St. Saint Germain, one of the ascended masters, the one that rides the, the seventh ray. I mean, it's so beautiful, um, very inspirational. So these little things, these are my guides, my teachers. They inspire me and in, in, in like shaping me to be a, a great speaker, a great leader. And so I love it. I, it's just me being myself. And this is my natural ability. It's just to speak and to really come from the heart. All right, so then I guess what was between that and um, you starting speaking galactic languages? Yes, um, going up and about a couple years ago uh, through a Bashar, I was watching one of Bashar's videos, and I found I came across um, uh, Max and I came across Jim, and Max was doing Reiki on Jim, and I think it was called right around called it might be right before he got the name I think maybe after the name but human colony and I didn't know what it was I thought this is interesting and they Jim was opening up at that time early to talk bringing through uh, ET energies and they're talking about the ships and stuff and I was fascinated by this it just another click the remembrance for me and I got I was just so overwhelmed and I told myself even years before I met Max and Jim, I always told myself, I want to find a group that I feel comfortable, that I could let my guard down, that I could be more vulnerable and just share my story and, and to communicate people of like mind. That was the thing about vulnerability and c getting opening up to connect with people of like mind. And I, I found this group. I found a wonderful group, Hukalo, and I'm so thankful uh, to Max and to Jim because any, I wouldn't have this opportunity if I didn't take the, the next step, and that was to to engage and to have conversations, deep conversations with people one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. And I would recommend those who are watching right now get in touch with Hukalo, um, and then just and look up, just look it up on YouTube. Just type in Hukalo. It's uh, H-U-C-O-L-O, and just and you'll find it. And you'll find these groups, and you can get in contact with them. And they're a great organization that just promotes uh, love, that re promotes contact uh, with extraterrestrials. Yeah, the organization is the wrong word. A community, like loosely defined community, is a better word. Yeah. Whoever once comes, whoever once leaves, there is no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you're drawn there. Like yes, there. yes, it's a co-creation, but very loosely defined. There is no organization is very basic basic there is a core of people who are doing it more often and who there are people like brian who are online all the time online all the time chatting doing webinars and stuff and thank you for creating this community it's uh, it is home yes so your development let's do talk about you Yes, and the, the language is in itself, um, what we call light language, galactic language. Um, what was really interesting in the beginning, um, I've always, I'm going to say always, but when I was, maybe years before I met Hukalo, um, I would just walking around the house saying cheeky, auto, you know, just making up all kinds of like words. And I, I thought about languages and I didn't know what I was really saying. I'll make a pause. So, going back to the languages and stuff, um, the languages are very interesting. And so I started uh, just talking about the languages, I mean, making stuff up in a way. And I, I got in 2009, 2009, 2010, I heard this name say Kinji or Kinjin or something. I didn't know what it meant, you know, at the time. And so it, it would just, it would keep popping in my mind. And then I started doing research on like, um, Japanese warriors and stuff. I, I didn't know what it but said Kinji or Kinjin and I had no idea what it was. And then later I found out it was the King of Era, Kinjin. But they either the Pleiadians or someone was trying to get in touch with me. And and so that was it was just very fascinating. That was just another side side thing. So but Era is a planet in uh Pleiadian constellation Tegeta. on the star Tageta. Yeah, and that's you know, we were Honored to speak to Kinjin through more than one, actually three channelers, I guess. And what was fascinating about that is I remember when um, Takur came through, I think it was, and someone asked a question about how long have they been here, actually those ships been here, and they said something about six or seven years ago. And Takur is Elyran, our main contact in uh, uh, 
our main contact in, in, in the alien world. And um, that's, that, that's about it. Yes. Yeah. And so I was really fascinated by that. And when she said that and that and then it goes back to my, you know, six or seven years ago, I started seeing these lights and I'd gotten this in 2009 here in this Kinji or Kinjin. And so that just clicked and it, it brought back a trigger until, you know, not too long ago, within a year ago. I was like, ah, that's maybe that's the, the people that I was contacting and they're letting us know that you might be part of a bigger group down the road and so that's where i found hukalo and this is it's just it's all starting to come back now so and galactic language galactic language back to galactic languages so um there was a couple of hukalo members that i met online and in the chat boxes we were chatting and they wanted to throw out um throw out Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Please continue. So the languages. Yes. Oh, you can flip it. Over. Yeah, flip it over. The dogs run, and as soon as we start talking about something interesting, they knock out the microphone. Oh my dear! <laughs> Wait. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, continue. There's dogs all around us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> They're just circling here, like our energy or something. Mm -hmm. I think it's our energy. Yeah, I guess. He likes galactic languages. So what was it about galactic languages? So the languages were very fascinating unto itself. So the, the galactic languages are very fascinating. They're light languages, what you call them, that some would call. And what was neat about these is, I, like I said, I was younger, just playing around with it. And then now uh, I was online, and they gave me this opportunity to start to talk about these languages. And I'm very happy that I get to, to share with uh, many people here about these languages and stuff. So the one thing that I, that I found fascinating is that there's so many languages on the planet. I think there's over 2,000 and something different types of dialect or something languages on this planet. Um, and, you know, you can throw it out there. And so I joined one of these, what you would call a chat, uh, a room, where called a hangout. And in these hangouts, we could, you know, people can practice uh, speaking the languages, just talk about channeling, just very open. And this is what Hukalo is about. Um, they facilitate that. They encourage that uh, to trigger people and to bring back the memories, you know, from their past, present. Just bring them more forward and share with a community like this. And it is a very, a, a very peaceful and loving community. Um, where there's no, what you would say, um, yes, yeah, so the languages, back to the languages. So we started to share these languages in a way that people can really, um, it triggers people. And so when people hear a certain language, um, you know, you say a little sentence, for the people that are, that are new to this, you might speak a little language, a little sentence or so, or a couple words, and pretty soon, even if you have to make it up, you start to say things that you wouldn't usually say, grunts, it could be ticking, it could be, you know, like little just I'll give you let me give you an example. Absolutely. So you'd have an example like and you're just you know it could sound very similar to the languages of earth or ancient times and and some people can translate it. I can't really translate it. I'm not a translator, but um, or interpreter. But what happens is the certain the tones in those in those sounds sometimes brings back, activates, triggers within other people their remembrance. And what happens is they start. It starts to flow for them. And so the more practice in the beginning, it feels like a practice. But when you're just Pretty soon, you're just chia kanoli a sakatuwa si chi ti a ki a le sa nani katuwa chi ki a le a sakani ya 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 yo so tutu no ni a kataya. Pretty soon, it just starts to flow, and you don't have to really think about it. It's just almost like automatic. So we play with these different languages, and then um, yeah, it, it just triggers something. And the very higher type languages like Octurian. The, what we we found out it it really that tone that that tonal energy it 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 lifts people's moods it really lifts people's moods if you can, can you give an example of Arcturian? <laughs> 
And what was interesting is, uh, you know, of, of course you can try to, you can make up things, but but um, first uh, Jim started speaking Arcturian, then several more people started speaking Arcturian, and then we discovered a recording in Arcturian language, which was uh, several, recorded by others several years before before the, you know, we started doing that. It was like seven years before, several years ago. And then, it, in addition to language, it was also Arcturian uh, Reiki or Arcturian uh, hands-on healing, when they f walk the fingers across your body. And altogether, it's unmistakable. It's something which came to us independently from what was recorded already on the video by someone else. So, so that was one of the one of the wonderful proofs. And another proof was when Brian was was there, and uh, it, it's all recorded online. Brian was there, Jim, and another. I think seven more people. So it was nine people together speaking Arcturian, and uh, they uh, read out a fairy tale. It was like a drama or, uh, yeah, some something very very standardized. It was like most, most sounded like like children's fairy tale. Yeah, poet, kind of poetry, children's fairy tale, and they all took turns and they all all knew what to say. And at the end, Jim translated what was that. So that was another proof which I was, you know, I'm really proud of having that recorded. When several people do the same time, take turns, it's. It, it, it cannot be just made up. It was very well orchestrated. Yes, uh, I agree. I, I, these things just inspire people. They they bring about an inspiration within people. So, And you don't have to know, like if you want to ever practice or, or just feel like you have something and you want to share it, please do. Just share it with fine people of like mine. Find the community. Find that what works for you. And know that you're not alone out there. You're not going crazy. There are people of like mind that do have these. It's, it's an inner knowingness, but it's like a past, our past also. And we're bringing it into the present present now to share with people that uh, a commonality more of a like-mindedness and it's it brings back so much remembrance where people can come to a community and share and be themselves without judgment and some people like Wendy they spoke this language for a long time before they found human colony before they found others who speak the language and then they come and discover that they were not crazy it was just part of the plan and the language is absolutely real. It comes from, from them, from the stars. And what's the purpose of that? The purpose, I think, is just to help with a part of an ascension or enlightenment. It really it's about awareness. It really comes down to enlightenment. Ascension equals awareness. It's just being more aware that you're not just having one lifetime. You're not just you don't go through just the birth cycle you know you have your life a process and then you cast off feet of clay and then you die it's not just that it's much bigger than that consciousness it goes through it carries over to other lifetimes your consciousness what you retains within the fields of your your um, your what you would call the chakras you you carry this in spirit you carry this over to another lifetime and to another lifetime and to another lifetime you go past forward it doesn't matter so once your incarnational cycle on this planet is through you go on to other you can re reincarnate on this planet and you can travel us travel you know travel around the universe and I think most of us have, if not all of us, have been on other worlds, other planets, um, and it all comes from a source, comes from somewhere. So um, it's multidimensional, you know, fascinating. Yeah. So channeling is like we are in a, in a system where you have to choose whether you believe or not. There is no definite proof, right? There is no definite proof. But few miracles are permitted. One of them is miraculous recoveries, miraculous cure, miraculous uh, recovery from illness, healing, Reiki healing, and other types of mirac miraculous healing. Another one is uh, out-of-body experience, uh, near-death experience, um, that kind of thing, which Brian also experienced. Another one is channeling. It's a, sort of a miracle which is very personal. You can believe it or you don't believe it. It's up to you. You always have a choice whether to believe it or not. And, and languages is one of those. It ca for you, if you start speaking it, it comes from elsewhere. It comes from outside of your experience. You haven't been taught in this life. So for you, it is a personal miracle. And others can easily dismiss it, saying it's just yada yada, something made up. 
So those miracles are for personal up upliftment and um, and it, there is always a choice whether you believe it or not. It's up to you to choose. There is no push and no hard evidence. It's lo not like a UFO landing on your um, mm, public place where everybody sees it, right? And another reason for uh, not prison, <laughs> another prison, another reason for um, languages is um, opening up the channels when you choose to start speaking it, when you choose to start communicating with others in it, and to open the channeling ability. So many people in our community started from speaking languages and then went to true channeling, like trans channeling or conscious channeling, but they bring the language and then they, like Wendy and then they bring the translation or they bring the translation the message by itself without the language so that's one of the ways to open because when you hear the language like Brian you don't know what it says it comes through you you just channel it without censorship without censoring what is there and then when you when the real message comes you also don't censor you just let it go and you become a, a conduit yeah a radio receiver <laughs> yeah it's it's exactly it's what he said I mean, it's beautiful yes it, it really is it's you're 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 just you're being like that conduit of, of energy because like we are like the like a what a receiver would be yeah like a receiver in a way yes and you started to channel it a little bit yeah i'm i'm more conscious and slightly letting go more and more i'm almost to the point where i can just totally let go i still have a little bit of fear that's usually with um uh, with people around me, I usually have to be isolated in a, in a dark room or somewhere <laughs> where I can just not have any distraction whatsoever. So that's still, I'm still working on that. So, yeah. Let's a little bit discuss the biological mechanism of the channeling, like the science of that. Is it coming through radio waves or not? Um, the radio waves that we use here, I, I don't know. There might be a way that can... Um, the people can work with that. I'm not. I'm not like an expert in radio waves, but like a radio, reg, like a radio. Yeah, regular electromagnetic, like, uh, yeah. like uh, cell phone waves or walkie-talkie waves or your real physical radio waves. Do you know the difference? The difference would be that a cell phone doesn't pick up, say, in a basement in a building where there's a lot of shielding or in a cave. So, have you noticed that your language would come different in different locations? Um, I haven't really noticed that. Um, maybe it sounds different. You know, it's never usually the exact, maybe the tone. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't channeled in the basement yet. I haven't, you know, the locations. I haven't changed locations. I usually, and around the same area where I have channeled. Um, but I don't, I haven't, that's a good thing. I, I've never tried that. So I experimented with it, with Jim and other channelers and with myself. I channeled uh, somewhat. And, um, yes, some places inspire, obviously. Some places are vortexes of so great energy. Uh, like being on the beach is a great... This is one of the best places, for actually. It's one of the... Yeah, very... Chicago is pretty dark, but this is one of the lightest, brightest, energetic, happiest, purest places in Chicago. Especially because of the dogs who purify it even more. Poop and purify, right? <laughs> purify and poop. <laughs> All right. And um, it is, yes, there is a dependence. It depends where you're located. But it's not radio for sure because you can be in the basement, you can be in a cave, and you can, in a cave, would, it, would, it would come even clearer. You can channel anywhere. It's, you're not cell phone, you're not radio. It's not radio, it's not physical. It is something very basic it comes through the basic consciousness no no matter how shielded you are and actually other scientists did the, uh, did the same they would uh put the psychics into the faraday cage which is actually a metal cage which blocks all the electromagnetic waves like made of the wires specially designed specially spaced wires and you know their cl clairvoyance psychic abilities remote viewing goes as easy there i think it's even easier to get when you are shielded from electromagnetics it's easier to get to the state connected to the to, to god i can see that yeah i could I, I could see why that would be um 
Yeah, and for people who want to just play around with that and practice that, channel in different locations. If you are a channeler or inspiring to be a channeler, um, just play around with it. Um, find small groups that, that interest you. Um, do one-on-one. -on -one. If you're not comfortable with everybody in a big, large group, just start small. One-on-one -on -one would probably be the best. Uh, that's how I work with some people. I want to give a shout-out to Sabrina and Gabriel. You know who you are. They're the ones that help me with the Octurian language. Uh -huh. So they were playing around with it one day in, a, in, in one of the galactic languages or one of the hangouts, and we were playing around, and they helped inspired me to just... To that trigger effect. I mean, that's all it took was for them just to speak it and to hear it. And all of a sudden, I started picking it up. I was like, wow, I'm actually doing this. And so they, I wanted to thank them for inspiring me. Yeah. Same with me. I, I, the language didn't come to me yet, but um, Channel it did. And uh, I did it through video Skype. I connected to friends who I trusted and who were available at that time. And I'm very thankful for those who helped me practicing. And it just comes, you feel it, it's coming through you. It doesn't come from outside, it comes from inside. But you feel inspired, you feel inspiration and you feel that your speech becomes more coherent. And sometimes, not often, the information comes which you absolutely didn't think about that before. Often it comes as they, the spirit, plays through you and picks up from your memory, from your inner core information you already know just arranges it in a new way but sometimes it comes just something with that you didn't know something at random like to me it seems like you pick up at random things and give it to other people to others and they say oh that was a perfect match right mm -hmm. don't worry don't worry anything else we need to discuss anything yeah. you any more experiences you wanted to share um the only thing i wanted to, uh, to share was that um, if people are interested in and to finding Hukalo, um just just um, just go to the just type in the YouTube on Hukalo, uh Hukalo on YouTube, uh, just you know H U C O L O, and you'll find other links that will take you to Hukalo's website. And I'm not sure they're in the process of maybe moving things around, always expanding. So yeah, but the keyword is still unique. So Yes, Hukalo is very unique. And Hukalo stands for human colony, in a, abbreviated in a fancy way. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very easy to find. And uh, if people out there are watching, you want to get in contact with many of us, um, you'll find hangouts, you'll find chats, you'll find um, uh, just things that you're, inspire you, you know, things that, you know, uh, that people will want to know more about, and it's especially about uh, ETs, about... Um, just making that connection with people of like mind and to share your ideas, to share. It's a community of sharing. That's the one thing I really love, the sharing. All right, let's do a little um, blessings on meditation. So you, you speak galactic language. Uh, try to give us a sample of different languages. If you know the names, that would be great. And I will reflect on it, whatever comes to my mind. I cannot say it's a translation, but it would be a reflection. Um, I could try Lyran. It's a little. It's like a deeper. It comes from. It comes from like that deepness within you. And it's kind of a slower. You're you're toning it down. The tone's coming down. And so I'll just start. Niyako sholo towa ta ka. Niya shali riya tana ni ka ka. Shatu wa yihya ki niya liya ka toho. Ni sha ka ni ya ra so to to nu wu yi ya ka ta ta yi yi li ya no wa ka ta shi tu wa ki ya ni ki ya la la so ko to ni shi ki ya ta Connect your heart. Let it flow. Don't force it. Connect to your inner feeling and be true to yourself. Another language, um, do Octurian. Understand you are one with God. Understand you are one with the Source. There is no miracle 
to be observed. There is no miracle to prove that it is real. Just open yourself up to be to be part of the creation. Open yourself up to let the creation speak through you. Uh, let's see here. I'm not sure of another one. It might be a Pleiadian. あ、We are not intruders. We are not here to help. We are you. We are one together. Don't neglect your life. Live your life in the fullest. The miracles of creation, the miracles of channeling, the miracles of languages are gifts from the universe to you, which you can use at your disposal, at your choice to expand your life and make your life more full and blossom in a brighter way, in a way that brings more true nature of yourself out. That's good. Three of them. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much um, for having me, Max. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, you have always been a support and you have always promoted the idea of integration. Do you want to take, tell more about integration and vulnerability? These are your favorite words. Yeah, I always talk about the integration and vulnerability. It's like when people come to a community, take what works for you and leave the rest behind. The integration is just finding people of like mind coming together and sharing in a community that supports empowerment, self-empowerment. That's what I'm all about, is just being yourself, getting into the self, because especially when we talk about with extraterrestrials, the connections, the more you are yourself, the more you can let go of the shame, the guilt, um, the judgments, especially the fear, the fear, when you're letting go of the judgments that you hold within yourself, the fear dissipates. The fear really, you just really let go of that. And you can be very calm and more peaceful within your life. Is when you're letting go of the judgments, the necessity to judge another. And no matter what that is, even in spite of fear of what others think, it's your choosing, Make allow your choices, your gratitude that you give to yourself. When you're in that state of gratitude, what's happening is it raises your vibration. It lifts you up. You feel full of joy and you want to share that with others. So smiling is what Max is one is the key points is beautiful because you're just by your smile you're walking down the street your smile your gratitude it affects everything out it's a ripple effect it, it's so beautiful and it's that simple it's the simplicity is what it makes our lives more joyful it's really the simplicity and um that would probably be my main thing is just enjoy life to its fullest and think of it as you had one life to live even though we know we don't but just for this instant being on this planet for this lifetime feel every day that it is just one lifetime and where you would just do anything you could to really enjoy your life. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Brian. That's a wrap.